Why'd you cut your mandolin? <laughs> Just stupid. <laughs> The history of sports cards goes back over a hundred years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. Uh, so just to be clear, I'm going back on, I'm going yes, west. you are. Okay. So the guy we're going to see tonight is a friend of a friend. The guy says, hey, I know this guy that has a bunch of old cards. Brought out these cards and, and I'm not kidding, Ty, he had them in his breast pocket of his shirt. <laughs> and he pulls them out and it's like 54 Bowman Campanella, 55 Bowman Mantle, wow. but you don't okay. want to exit. Uh, so I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to not keep them in your pocket. I saw maybe a dozen cards and it looks like it's something we want to go look at. So, so he met you saying, here's a sampling of what I have. Correct. Exactly. Are you interested? And so you saw enough to be interested. Yeah, in for here. sure. And he described some more of stuff he has. This isn't by any means a large collection in terms of volume, which I'm sure is a good break for you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go look at some cool vintage stuff, which is my favorite part of the hobby. This guy's had this stuff in his closet for decades, you know, yeah. hasn't seen the light of day. I love collections like that. I love finding stuff like that, that has been kind of lost to the hobby. It's not been in the hobby. It's not in circulation, right? Yeah. That, that kind of, that's the intriguing part. You never know what you're going to find. Hello. Hey, Glenn. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's my friend Ty right here. Hey, good to meet Hi. you. Hey, great to meet you. Ah, you got some stuff laid out here, huh? Yeah, I... Oh, boy. Said them out. I knew you would want to look at them. Heck, yeah. And check them out. This, I think that's a 49 Rizzuto. That is a 49 Bowman Rizzuto. Yep. What are, we, what are we seeing here? I mean, we got uh, we got 49s to mid 50s right here. 58s, 58s 56 uh, Mantle. 56, 57s, 50 here. 54 56 Bowman Campanella. Here. Whoa. Whoa. What do you What do you think? I think it's awesome. I think there's yeah. way more there than I expected and way better conditioned stuff. I mean, there's obviously some stuff that's been handled and yeah. I mean, he, he played with them when he was a kid and, and traded and you'd hear him telling stories like they weren't just sitting idly by, they, they were used and that's fantastic. Uh, some amazing stuff, don't you think? Oh, totally. I'm liking yeah. the 51 Williams here. Yeah, it's 51, right? That's fair yeah. condition. But it's yeah. not as not in as good a condition as the Mickey Mantle I once <laughs> had. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got I think ripped off by an auction company. I think they they graded it like about a two or something. I've had them since I was eight to about 15 years of age, and it's just a, in the late. 80s, early 90s, I started buying complete sets, you know, without unsealing them or opening them and keeping them in the in the box that came in. And so they're just all, all will be in mint condition. As I was going through them, I, I knew from what he had said earlier that he would cringe if he saw how I had them <laughs> stored. He may have mentioned that before we walked in. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say maybe 13 or 14. I was beginning to lose the thrill of it. I was getting old. I had other things on my mind. I wanted to play. <laughs> play baseball. It's my favorite sport. I enjoy baseball a lot. In fact, when I was in Little League, I, I led our team. In fact, I led the league in homers the first year. We came into this thinking he's pulling cards out of his pocket. And you, you walk in and see the table and you're like, from 49 to 58. Right. There's multiple Hall of Famers with right. perfect corners, great centering, perfect bends in the cards. I mean, I'm so impressed. It's one of the best vintage collections we've seen. Back then, I could have told you just about all the players on all the teams and kept up with the stand uh, standings. And then I remember listening to the World Series on the radio. It was all so exciting. As the fly ball got out to left field, Woodling getting under it. And the Yankees are champions, and look at their piggyback riding Bob Cazala. The Yankees for the fourth consecutive time. And more of their pounding that Cazala for a tremendous release job. Look at them go. 
Are you looking for a new way to buy sports cards, something a little more exciting? Well, go try something called Loop. Loop is an online marketplace dedicated to sports cards where you can buy sports card slabs, you can buy singles, you can buy packs or breaks, all of it on one app, one website called Loop. Stop being boring, go try Loop. And the best part is you get 30 bucks if you click the top right corner and use the Chasing Cardboard link. It is an awesome experience, I guarantee you're gonna love it. Back to the show. But I started, I guess, eight or nine, my dad would give us a, a small uh, allowance, of course, small by today's standards, but by then it's probably very generous, you know, a quarter a week or 10 cents a week or something, gradually increased. And at that time, every time I'd get that dime or whatever, right across the street from the school was a little convenience store, not much bigger than this area in here. And I'd go in there and I'd get me a couple of packs and here's my dime and walk out. <laughs> See what I got. So you're telling me the cards that you ran out of the gas station with are these cards here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've always been one to want to take care of my things. Now I traded cards that were in pretty bad shape. You know, I got cards that wasn't in good shape. Yeah. But I traded non-named players for a named player. So a lot of my name cards are, they've got some flaws in them, lots of flaws. The common thread with all these collectors is the stories and the passion they had for their cards. Glenn is no exception. Yeah. You just want to put your arm around Glenn and be like, let's go sit down and chat for the next <laughs> right. five hours. Right. As I got older, I guess uh, 12 years old, uh, got a hold of a catalog where you could buy cards. And it was like anywhere from 25 cents, 35 cents, 10 cents. And I started buying those cards and that's where I got the 49, 40, uh, or 50, and 51s, and so, cause I was, you know, I was born in 47, so I had three so or four So you were collecting old. mid 50, early to mid 50s, I started around, yeah, I was starting to buy them about 54. I would have been seven, just started first grade. Okay. But look at like the Aaron's gorgeous, the Kofax. Corners are great. Centering's off, but I mean, that's um, normal. Kofax looks feel so Feel free good. to take any of those uh, top loaders and protect these cards. There's no creases in that. There's no snow. I mean, there's a lot of ones in there, but there's a lot of sevens in there. Right. But you're going to be like, what? A seven? <laughs> right. So, yeah. I mean, it's that or like have some... Yeah, who come it's in and totally take advantage off, of them. Man. Like, yeah. That, if if it was like, hey, you got to give them all the money right now up, up front in cash, what would be your number coming to mind right now? 40. 40. Mine was 30. So we were right whoop, somewhere in there. Yeah. Now you got mantle in here on these tattoos. I don't even know how rare that is. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't, can't remember the year. These are a Topps stamp, that's what these are. Look how beautiful that is. Like, that is gorgeous. Why'd you cut your mandal? <laughs> Just stupid. <laughs> no, no, it's, you did, how do you know? Oh, that's Hank Aaron's rookie. That's a big card. Is it? Yes, it is. What do you think that one's worth? Probably a two or a three. A lot of those are ones, twos, threes. I mean, if there's no creasing, it's a, it would be a gorgeous a too. Card. Like, you'd be like, that's a great card. Yeah. It adds up real quick when you have a lot of those cards. Yeah, and you have a lot of those cards. Uh, Eddie Goodell, do y'all know the story of Eddie Goodell? In moments like this, we like to call it story time with Mike. I think he really wants us to cuddle up next to him, grab a blanket, and sit by the fire. No thanks. He was uh, St. Louis Browns. Bill Veck was their owner. He was crazy. Like everybody thought he was nuts, but he always tried to do things to get people to come to the ballpark. And he had this midget he paid him to hit one. He was the leadoff batter. I think he walked. He walked because he's so <laughs> tiny. On four pitches, Veck told him, if you dare swing at a pitch, I have a sniper in the stands that's going to shoot you. Do not swing at a pitch. He walked on four pitches. So this box is all 1950, late 50s, 1960 
uh, I haven't even gotten it. Yeah, late 50s, 1960. And the first I pull out a stack, and there's a 55 mm -hmm. tops, Ted mid, Williams. Mid 50s. There's Al K line right behind him. line right behind him. Yeah. This is Ted Williams' first tops card. He had been with Bowman through 1954. And then, so there's a Bowman Williams. This is 51, right? And so what he did. He finally signed with Topps in 54, and Topps was so happy they made him the first card in the set and the last card in the set. They made yeah. two cards of him. The other one's a yellow background. I haven't found it yet. You probably have it somewhere. But this is card number one, which as you know, if you're a kid, card number one, because you would stack up the cards, right, and put them in order as a kid, right? Number one and, number, and the last card would get the worst rubber band marks or the worst yeah. treated because they were on the very front. So cards number one of any vintage set are always very condition sensitive because they were just treated poorly. Not intentionally, just yeah, that's where it fell, you know. Um, and so this TED card is very hard to find in good condition because it was beat to crud all the time by people. And yours shows the exact where you would expect it to be for a guy that bought the cards at the time and stored them in your house, in a, in a shoebox or wherever you put them. So I love it. I actually love it. We were like kids in a candy shop, almost like someone walking into a value box at a, at a sports card show and finding just crazy good cards lined up in his three, four row boxes. That was a good experience, pulling out high dollar vintage sitting in a box. That, my man, is a good looking card right there. Yeah, it is. Ah, give me bring them. I didn't go through the football. There you go, that needs to be top loaded. Again, don't equate value with cool factor. Those are two very different things. I can think something's amazingly cool and awesome. That doesn't necessarily mean it has value, but it doesn't make it any less cool. Like I can, that's the thing about cards. I love them because I love them, not because of the value of them. And the fact that they have value is a nice ancillary benefit, but I just love the cards. I love the history. I love what it means. I love the stories. I love the players. They're answering a lot of questions that I've had for years about, you know, what, what are these worth? What are they, well, what's the status of them? What can I do with them? Otherwise, I just put them back in the box and stick them in there. I didn't know anything else to do because I had no alternative. I didn't know anybody that was knowledgeable, nobody that I felt I could trust that could help me out. So without their help, they, they would remain just boxed up. How do, we, how do we handle that? We could buy it out outright in cash. Yeah, but with we family could consign friend, it. We could consign it. Which is what I was kind of leaning towards because I think we could take care of him more so yeah. if we could sign it for him. Yeah, because I think he'll net more at the end. So when yeah. we can sign items, yeah, it just it's the work's on us. But that's why we charge a percentage and yeah. we, think, we think we can, yeah, and we think we can get more money for him. All right, so consignment versus cash deal. Obviously cash deal, we're gonna give him cash and we're gonna just wash our hands of it and give him the best deal we can. The problem there for him is that he's not gonna get the maximum value for his cards after we grade them and really extract everything we can out of them. A consignment deal is gonna look at all those values, it's gonna allow us to build out the values and take a small commission and pay him the rest of it. So he's gonna gross more, we're gonna put in the work, pay the taxes and the fees. Okay, so you know the cards that we're getting from Glenn here are gonna be going into our eBay marketplace. It's where we've been selling for two decades and the marketplace that we trust. And the best part is eBay now provides a service called the eBay Vault that allows you as a buyer to go take these cards and put them in your secure environment. So if you're looking for cards and you wanna put them in a vault and you're thinking about maybe selling those cards in the future, take advantage of the eBay Vault. Lower transaction costs, low friction, and an ease of transaction that doesn't exist anywhere else. Go find these cards and put them in your eBay vault today. Click the link in the top right corner. Now, back to the show. First off, this is one of the best vintage collections we've ever seen. Seeing how well you've taken care of them and there's just some, there's just absolutely great stuff here. You have some really amazing stuff. In terms of how I think we can help you, um, if we were to offer you a cash offer, you wouldn't be happy with it. So the reason why we didn't err on the side of a cash offer here is because of the situation that Glenn was in. He mentioned that he's living off his life savings right now. And honestly, we just don't feel like we can maximize his value with a cash deal. So we, we lean towards a consignment. And that's kind of the trend right now because of the volatility in the sports car market and our ability to maximize value through a consignment. 
So yes, it's a little more pressure for us to deal with because we have to fit this within a timeline, but it's the right thing to do for Glenn in this moment. It's worth more than what we can pay you in cash because of the work and the, all the fees that we have to pay and things to do, the things to get it to sell for the max value, right? So what I propose to you is that we consign these cards for you. The consignment would be simple. We'd take them, we'd grade them, everything. Do all the work to sell them through our network of people we know in the hobby. Some of it'll sell on eBay where there's fees associated with that. But if we can sell it off of eBay, that sell, it saves you money too because you pay all the fees too. Like you're gonna pay us a charge to do it all for you and to know where to send it and which company. We have deals with some of the grading card companies to get cheaper prices than you could get if you were to send them. And so I think we can save you a lot of money there. I mean, you're talking 10 to $15,000 of grading costs at our price, like at what we can get it for, to grade the cards that need to be graded out of this collection. You agree? Well, card. Mickey Mantles and these types of cards at PSA get escalated in price. And so you'll pay 100 to 150 a, That's a right. card to grade. Because the, the PSA, which is the top grading company, like you get the, mo they sell for the most, they're kind of the most recognized. If they charge you initially 50 bucks, they might say, no, that card's worth a lot more money. We're gonna charge you 100 or 150. So point being, we can still do it cheaper than you can do on your own. And I think we could sell it all in 90 days. Like I think we can move nearly every single card in 90 days. You can get more out of this collection than we can pay you cash. And what we would do is, let's say every month as we're selling things, getting stuff back from the grading companies and all that, we'll send you, all right, we've sold 10,000 worth whatever this month and we'll send you that money. Like you'll, it's not all at once, you'll just get it as we sell it, basically. Well, we walked out and I said, I would love to buy all these, but we can maximize Glenn's money in 90 days by consigning it for him. Because some of this stuff, you would sell it to us for a raw price and if it comes back a seven, like you're gonna lose out in five grand, it's not fair to you over all the cards, not one right, particular right. card. But, because I think you have a chance to get some really nice grades on some of these cards. We want to sell them for as much as we can too. That's the great thing about consignment, right? We want to maximize our values as much as we can because we're paying the fees too. I think the moral of the story here is, is you have a lot of money here. I, I think at the end of the day, we, being a family friend, I'd like to get him max value. Yeah. And it's not in a cash deal and we know that. That's yeah. just, we can't do that. We have to have enough margin of safety from a risk standpoint on our end. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense for us to pay cash either. Yeah. And that's not fair to him. I think we can get him more I agree. consignment. We're so. gonna make him tens of thousands of dollars more. Right. And just hearing his story, I wanna do that for him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So in the past, what we've done, Glenn, is we've just put a little basic contract to let you know that we're insuring the collection. Because a lot of times when we're grading cards, we're sending them off. And we have insurance every time we send it and just so you feel comfortable when we take it and mail things off to get graded, it's always protected. You're not gonna ever lose cards. Well, you might lose cards, you just won't lose money. Yeah, we, if we lose the cards, it's on us. We have to use our insurance policy, I guess is the point. Right. That's, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> as with all of our transactions, trust is a really big deal. And this is a friend of a friend of Mike's and we wanna make sure that he feels that we're doing everything we can to maintain the trust. And we, we value our reputation, so it's important for us that we do this the right way. So as we offer this deal, we do not take it lightly. Inflation is hitting so hard. I'm already getting pinched in my income because you know, I'm on fixed income and retired. And this year, I, or this month, I had to draw from savings to pay for my utility bills and grocery bills. I didn't buy anything extraordinary this past month, but there it is, I have to withdraw, cover, and I didn't like that. That's kind of an odd taste in the mouth. If there's stuff that we just don't feel like has a market, that we'll just give them back to you. Well, I'm it's sure not... there's a lot of waste cards in there. Well, there's no such thing in this era. <laughs> like, I don't think so. I don't think there's a lot of waste well, here. I mean, really have you seen these stamps? Like, they're like gorgeous. I don't know. Right, but if they grade, so <laughs> even the common cards on some of these sets, if they grade, if we think that's gonna be an eight, it's worth us grading. So Glenn, what we would do concern. first is we would take everything, we'd put it all in a spreadsheet for you, and we'd say, here's your entire inventory. And then we, I'd print it off, or he, Mike would print it off and give it to you, just so you know, like, this is what we're selling. And then as we sell things, we'll fill that spreadsheet out so you know exactly what everything's sold for and what you got paid on it. 
total transparency so you see everything, but it, it'll be interesting when you have this whole spreadsheet filled out and you start seeing values, there's gonna be some good stuff. I know without a doubt, a lot of these cards are gonna get decent grades and a lot of you are gonna be drooling all over these cards. We're sleeving everything up. Uh, with the top, we should have brought about a thousand more top loaders, but, but we, got, no. we got what we got. Still hot? It, I don't know, <laughs> I'm sweating for some reason. So we just wrapped up in Glenn's house. What, what an amazing collection, amazing story. Amazing people. Uh, yeah, just great people. We love dealing with great people. I just want to go above and beyond to take care of them. And like I, think, I really do. I think with the deal that we made with them, we're going to be able to yeah. do that and Absolutely. get them the max value for this collection. You know, now the hard work begins for us, which is actually fun work. It sounds like it's hard work, but going through cards, is it really ever not fun? Maybe sometimes? We have a really sweet job. At least with Let's these. Just say that. We get to go, I mean, yeah. uh, some of this stuff is really crispy, really beautiful. Yeah. Of course, it was kind of hard seeing something packed up to, to take out that I've had in possession of for 70 years. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is one of those, this is the most surprise I've been to in, a, in a collection in a long time. Not just because I think the expectations were kind of low coming in. We didn't in. know, right? We didn't know, family, friend, but the people were just insane. Glenn and Glow were incredible. We didn't get to see a lot of Glenn's wife on camera, but Glenn's wife was just exceptional. What an amazing testimony, amazing woman. I just am excited to get my hands dirty with these cards. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun. A lot of you watching, we're gonna be opportunities for you to get some good cards from this collection here, so. Be on the lookout. When you're on the road as much as we are, you're bound to be surprised. And our evening with Glenn falls into that total surprise category. From shirt pocket condition to mint condition, this last minute vintage deal is gonna be remembered for a long time. Now, as I'm showing you some of the cards that came back from this collection, be sure to bookmark our eBay store and our loop store. You can find both links in the show notes below. And if you're interested in having us look at your collection, be sure to email us at collections at chasingcardboard.tv. Keep chasing. Praise God from all blessings flow. Praising all creature here below, praise him above ye heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.